You guys know I'm a real estate agent here in Seattle, Washington, and I talk a lot about what you can buy or sell, but not a lot about what you can rent. I don't really work in rentals, but when I get an email from a subscriber saying she just signed a lease for a 170 square foot micro studio and she actually loves it, I have to go see what this is all about. Micro Studios came on the scene in America in about 2012, and I've actually toured one before. A couple in Capitol Hill back in 2020 rented a 250 square foot micro studio for $1,500 a month. Where are they now, you might ask? Well, I actually sold them a house. They've since upgraded to 1,700 square feet, are proud homeowners, and have a really cute looking puppy. Today's micro studio is going to be a little bit different at 170 square feet. Feet. For context, that is so small. My 31 foot Airstream is around 180 square feet and the average parking space is around 180 square feet. So yes, the place we're about to see is about the size of a parking spot and it'll cost you around $975 a month. But when the average one bedroom is running close to $2,300 a month, suddenly a micro studio doesn't sound that small. I just got here and I will say it was hard finding parking, which makes sense. So many units in a small space creates density. And so that is something where with these sorts of things, you probably can expect to not have a parking spot. So we're about to meet Margarita and check out her spot. I'm really excited to see it. Hey, are you Margarita? Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. I got you some flowers. Hi, I'm Margarita. I'm 22 years old. I work in tech and I live in a 173 square foot apartment in Seattle. So here we go. I can show you what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, this is basically it. I have a full kitchen, uh -huh. which is really, really nice. Um, yeah. In unit, washer, dryer. So everything's right there. This yeah. is the entire closet space. Oh so my gosh. Um, I literally got these at this Japanese dollar store. Each was one is it like Daiso. Daiso. Oh, they're like four dollars each. Put all my clothes, everything I like wear every day is here, and then less often up there. Super small fridge, mm -hmm. and then yeah, the bed. Yes, which is yeah. full size, so nice. Good. Not yeah, tiny. Little getting then, ready station. Yeah, and then the mirror just kind of like refracts light, makes it look a little bigger. That's I guess. smart. And yes, it brightens up the room. I think. So yeah, just my workstation. I work from mm -hmm. home, like, and then I have a full bathroom. Super basic okay, shower. Cool. I mean, <laughs> the bathroom in relation to like a small place, like the bathroom feels like a very normal sized bathroom. Yeah, right? yeah. it's yeah. pretty normal. It just has everything you need. Yeah, I feel like there's not a lot of spaces that you're not utilizing. Like yes. I'm in every single part of this apartment every single day. There's mm -hmm. not really extra leftover. The community also features a small lounge area rooftop deck and a gym with really nice views of the city. All in all, it's in a great location as well. So how long have you been living in this apartment? Um, so I think four weeks now. You moved here from the East Coast? Yeah, so I went to college for the last four years back in Atlanta at mm -hmm. Georgia Tech. Um, but before that, I was in New Jersey, right outside of New York City. In your previous living situations, were you also living this small? No, like I had a house back home. Does it feel like an adjustment? Does it feel like a sacrifice? Does it feel at all like dorm living? Um, okay, so the thing with dorm living is you're like with a bunch of other people. The awesome thing about this space is it's all yours, so it's not mm -hmm. like you're with roommates. It is nice because the building has a lot of like shared facilities. Like we have a nice rooftop, um, like pool, things like that. So maybe in that way. But Do you always have a pool? Like a pool table. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? A pool? Why'd you decide to live so small? So a lot of reasons. Probably the first one being cost. So even mm -hmm. though I make a pretty decent salary, um, a lot of it would have just disappeared towards rent, especially with rent prices mm -hmm. going way up. And you don't end up actually like when you're living in larger spaces, utilizing a lot of the space. I don't actually need that much stuff or own that much stuff. I just came with one suitcase. I actually love that. I won't allow myself to buy new clothes if my closet's full. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So your space kind of sets up your lifestyle. Did you consider like a larger space, like a one bedroom? And what were those prices like? Yeah, so I went, I was like looking for so long. I was looking at one bedrooms, mm -hmm. I was looking at studios. I was considering roommates, housing situations. So yeah. I've looked at like the full array of options. So I would say the minimum for a lot of them was around 2000 for a one bedroom. Wow. Um, for studios, maybe it could be like 1500 and then above, but those were a little bit harder to find and you were making a lot of sacrifices. I, I don't know if they're sacrifices, but mm -hmm. maybe it would be like an older building or not as safe of a neighborhood. So with this, you kind of get, it's new, everything works really well, everything you need, it's a really safe neighborhood. Mm -hmm. it, the space is just small. You work at Microsoft, yeah. you know, you're going to Redmond, that's far, but you're able to get there. Yeah, yeah, so we're really lucky because Microsoft has connectors literally mm -hmm. every single morning and in the afternoon. So I could get into Redmond in like 25 minutes. The connector yeah. has Wi-Fi. It's really nice, honestly. Oh, that so is nice. You, could work on you gotta sneak me on that sometime. Or is it like yeah. only Microsoft employees? You could, you could bring a guest in, basically. Oh, for real? Wait, can you bring a guest <laughs> on? On the campus yeah yeah i can check on campus if you need it you guys <laughs> okay thumbs up this video for a microsoft little campus tour if that's allowed i don't know you seem really smart with your money like <laughs> i love your habits mm -hmm. how much of your salary goes towards your housing um so i spend basically i think less than 10 percent towards housing wow. which is really nice it allows yeah. me to focus more on like experiences or mm -hmm. times with friends yeah. was this the cheapest place in seattle that you could find so i found maybe one option that was cheaper um it was like 700 but you would share the bathroom which i really didn't want to do <laughs> like at this tough. point i'm working a full-time job like yeah. i kind of wanted my own thing your values really align with mine too i don't think i've ever lived in a space like i used to rent my rooms out in my townhouse because yeah. i'm like i don't need that much space so i love that sort of thing but at some point in life you start to need more space how long do you picture yourself living here um, I mean, I could see myself living here for a while. I think obviously when I have like a family or something mm -hmm. like that um, <laughs> is when I would definitely need more space, but I'm 22, so yeah. I'm taking it kind of easy and seeing things um, how they go, but I can see myself living here for a while for sure. So what do you think? Would you live in a 170 square foot micro studio? think there's a time and a place where they're appropriate. If you're still in college, micro studios tend to be around colleges because they are a lot like dorms. They're also great for people that maybe are bi-coastal, traveling a lot, and just need a really simple place to crash and cook a meal. And then lastly, if you're like Margarita and you just want to live sustainably, you don't need that many things in your life and you don't need that much space to fit all your things. If you want more real estate tips living in Seattle or just Seattle guides, I have a separate channel for that. I'm going to have it linked below. This kind of content usually goes on there, so you can check that out. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week for an update on Minimo the Airstream. Be sure to tune in Sunday at 10 a.m. I'll see you guys. Bye!